Thank you, friends. I now have the honor and distinct pleasure of introducing the man of the year, Mr. Felix Sater. You think you know, Felix Sater. Let me tell you something you don't know. I have been Felix's friend and rabbi for 16 years. In the early years of our friendship, he would come and talk to me. He would tell me stories and he would say that he needed someone to tell these things to. He would tell me about things he's done and, and he was involved in. I tell you friends, these stories were strange and getting stranger with each passing month. Rabbi, you know what I did last week? I did this. And oh my God, you know where I was last week in such and such a place? And I'm thinking, sure, of course you did that. Do I really look like the type who's out there shopping for a bridge? I only recently told Felix I really didn't believe most of it. I thought perhaps he watched too many James Bond movies, or read one too many Tom Clancy novels. Anyone who knows Felix knows that he can tell a good story. I simply did not put much credence to them. One fine day, two and a half years ago, Felix invited me to join him at a private closed door session in the federal building in New York. Only his immediate family members were allowed in and he would gotten special clearance for his rabbi to be there as well. I get there and to my amazement, I see dozens of US intelligence officers from all of the various three-letter intelligence agencies of this country, including some I had never even known existed. They're taking turns standing up one after the other, offering, offering praise for Felix, praising him as an American hero for his work and his assistance in the highest levels of this country's national security interests. They were speaking about Felix Sater, my Felix, they're talking about his clandestine activities to help the government and protect our country. They elaborated in great detail, stuff that was more fantastic and more unbelievable than anything he had been telling me. I vividly recall one of the officers proudly stating, and I quote, Felix Sater probably saved tens of thousands of US lives, maybe even millions, he certainly saved the lives of thousands, if not of hundreds, if not thousands of US servicemen and women through the brave work that he's done, battling at the risk of his own life with this country's greatest enemies. Friends, I sat there open mouthed. I was flabbergasted. Here I was listening to these stories for the past decade. To me, they were all Bubba Mises, Felix Mises. And here I am hearing them being said by federal agents about my Felix Sater. He wasn't just bragging, the stories I didn't believe. And I realized that he only told me one tenth of what really went on. I'm not gonna elaborate more because I'm not allowed to. I probably said more than I should. But I felt that it's important that I have to say something to tell the world, to tell you the rest of the story to tell you the things about my dear friend Felix Sater that you won't read in the newspaper, but that I heard with my own ears along with his family and a few others sitting here tonight. And just as he stood up then and risked his life for his country, possibly the fact that we're sitting here tonight in safety as a result of his efforts. He did the same at his Chabad, this Chabad so near and dear to all of us. He didn't have to. Each time I came to him, we were faced with a challenge. He always took it personally. Chabad's problem was his problem. He always did what he could and more to get us through the rough patches that we faced over the years. Last year, we were faced with our most difficult year, Hurricane Sandy and a mortgage issue that had to be addressed. He stepped up to the plate and rolled up his sleeve. And many people helped. Many of you sitting in this room tonight helped and I'm most grateful to each of you. Felix took the lead. He did whatever had to get done. He didn't just do his fair share, he did whatever had to get done. He didn't just do what he had to do. He did what was needed. It's safe to say that during this recent challenge, 
Felix, you were the one that saved this Chabad house, the one that turned it around. <laughs> so that we continue to thrive and do our work of spreading Yiddishkeit and goodness all around us. Felix, now you know the real reason why I wanted to name you Man of the Year. So I have the opportunity to tell this little bit of the Felix Seder that I know. I can tell you for sure, friends, if you're ever in a foxhole and you need a true friend, someone who's really committed to helping, when you're in a situation when there's no resolution and no way out, and you can pick one man to be there with you in that foxhole in that situation, I'd pick Felix Seder any day of the week. Felix, I want to personally thank you for your dedicated service to your country. I want to personally thank you for your dedicated service to our Chabad. And yes, indeed, you are certainly without doubt the man of the year. Felix isn't someone that you would describe exactly as the ultra-Orthodox Hasidic Jew. However, he and I have a special kinship. I call him in Russian, my brat, my brother. A kinship because of our special relationship with the Rebbe, whom he met on a few occasions as a child. On one occasion, the Rebbe arrives at 770 and he's a little kid running around Eastern Parkway. And the Rebbe walks out, all the Hasidim are standing back, of course, and this little chutzpanik walks up calmly to the rabbi, and the rabbi sets, stands and chats with him, apparently, for a number of minutes, to the amazement of all of the Hasidim. And I believe it was during that brief encounter, Felix, that the rabbi connected with you in a very deep place. I believe, as he does, the rabbi was blessing him and empowering him to do great things, some of the great things he's already done for his country, for his people, and for tzedakah and many, many more great things that still lie ahead in your future as a Jew and as an American, as a philanthropist, as a leader and visionary. And tonight, friends, Felix will complete a Torah scroll commissioned by him in loving memory of his father, Rabbi Mordechai ben Yisrael Tev Yaakoyen, on the occasion of his just over one year yard site. The Torah is here to be completed momentarily after he receives his award and gives his response. But a couple of days ago, he's a last minute type of guy, as we know, a regular Chabadnik. He says, Rabbi, he calls me up on Thursday, Rabbi, you know, I have something I would like to do. What would it be? I have a wish, you know, this is a big mitzvah, writing a Torah, it's the last mitzvah of all 613, not everyone gets an opportunity to do it. It's a big deal. I want the Rebbe to be part of this mitzvah. Wouldn't it be nice if we can take the Torah to the Rebbe's personal study in Brooklyn and fill in a couple of letters? And I start to sweat, because to get into that room is not easy. It's been locked and lock and key for 20 years. You have to know someone who knows someone else. It's Thursday night. The dinner is Monday. And you can't postpone it. You've got to finish the Torah tonight. You've got to do it before the dinner. I said, Felix, it's a nice dream. We'll try. P.S. We move mountains. The head of the entire Chabad movement had to make phone calls. And last night at 9.30 at night, Myself and Felix and his friend Mandel Machkin are here, along with Rabbi Klein, our scribe, walked into that holy room where so many poured out their hearts over the 40 years, so many received blessings, and we filled in letters in that Torah. Friends, this is something special, this modern American, if you will, secular Jew, had it in his heart, he just had to do it. I thank him for that once in a lifetime opportunity which we shared. Felix, you know the Rebbe's watching over you tonight with miraculous blessings, showering you year after year. It's not a matter of faith, it's a simple fact. You also know as a fact that your father is watching over us tonight and blessing you as you bless his soul with the amazing mitzvah of writing a Torah. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me to give a warm welcome to the man of the year, Mr. Felix Seder.
thank Rabbi Paltiel um, for uh, making me the man of the year. It's not something that I expected. Uh, the, re the rabbi gave me the Rebbe's dollar. I owe him one back. A while back, he gave me he gave me one and to carry with me for safety protection for blessings. And I think that uh, now that I have one that I could put in my house, which is like uh, a mezuzah for the house, now my whole family can be protected and watched over. I'd like to give you back the one you had given me a few years ago for my protection. Um, it's truly an honor to be standing in front of all of you, uh, to be given this award, to be given this recognition. Um, it's an honor to serve on this board of this organization. The people that are on the board are amazing human beings. Rabbi Paltiel has described most of them to you here. Other than just the board members, there's a lot of people who make this place run so that people could come, so that they could pray, so that they could cry when they have bad moments, thank God for good moments. And I think that the most important thing that a person could have, and especially a Jew, is this feeling of what I hope I have, or at least I strive to have it, something called tikkun olam, which is repair the world or make it a better place than you found it. I truly hope that in the very distant future, when I'm no longer here, that somebody will look and say, he did. He... <laughs> and I think that that's probably my connection to the Rebbe, who I met as a child a few times. As you all know, I'm not a very religious person, but I feel I have a connection I always go to the Rebbe's gravesite. I always ask for things, and I always seem to wind up getting them. My life has been beyond interesting. Um, my wife says uh, living with me is like reading next week's newspaper today. <laughs> I a little choked up, so it's kind of hard, but I wanted to thank all of you for this amazing honor. And I think that the Rebbe had a very special place, and a very, he has a very special place in my heart. And I think that the Chabad organization, which is now everywhere, everywhere in the world that you look, it's there, was the vision of this person. And it gives the opportunity for Jews and non-Jews alike to come there, pray, enjoy. I mean, we have kids playing in our, uh, in our, in our basketball in the gym from all over Long Island. And this is a repeat performance in any place you go where there is a Chabad. And I am truly, deeply honored to be involved with this organization. And I would like to thank all of you for coming out and basically celebrating what Rabbi Paltiel did for me with this honor and I'm truly grateful. And I won, spent 25 years on the, uh, this month will be 25 years that I'm with my wife. I'm really looking forward to my next 25 with her. And hopefully in the next 25 years, I can truly accomplish some of the things that I want in Tikkun Olam. And with that, I'd like to say thank all of you. <laughs>